Hello, hello Facebook. Hi, how are you guys doing? Welcome to this week's Resilient Refresher course. Am I live? Yes, I am live. Okay, as usual, I hope a few people will join in. Thank you for joining in when you come in. So, how was the week, everybody? I hope the week was a good one. I know these are extraordinary times, times of Corona, lots of uncertainty going on. However, we have to be resilient. As long as there is life, there is hope. And that's why, of course, I'm doing this course, this resilient refresher course for us to remain resilient. Some of us, we know we are born resilient. However, sometimes with the many demotivating things happening, we see finally many people calling for justice or for equality for black people, people like myself, many others, we've been doing it for a long time. We actually studied human rights as a discipline myself. I not only did um, children's rights, I specialized in children's rights, but human rights is the broad category. And then the specific, um, I specialized in children's rights but human rights is actually one of the things I did in my masters so I'm happy to see the not the protests within itself and of course uh, our voices they need to be heard more I always tell people um, that black people in general, we have come a long way. Um, if you read history, I am Jamaica and Marcus Garvey was a um, freedom fighter. Of course, if you know black history, you will know that we as a people, we have come a far way. However, there's still many issues. There's still what, what we're seeing going on now as black people. It's not the everyday racism but it is the systematic racism that is the most awful thing that is affecting black people and i can talk on this topic because i live in a country where black is a minority i live in berlin germany and black is a minority group so the main um issue that blacks are fighting against now is the systematic racism. We are calling for equality, we are calling for justice, and we're saying enough is enough. Okay, so this program is not about that issue. Welcome everyone again to today's um, lesson. And of course, this is fitting also because today we're looking at community resilience we're looking at community resilience and trust me the black community we have been resilient for a long time we had no other choice but to be resilient so last week we start out with um family resilience family resilience and there were three main tips that i gave in order to build resilient families there should be three main highlights or three main considerations if we're going to have resilient families one was the shared goals and beliefs and then i said the family should have some level of connectedness yes we know we're human beings we're individuals we're not going to agree on everything however the family should have some point of connectiveness and then communication communication was the third tip why am i doing this first i started with family resilience now i'm going into community resilience because i i told you my philosophy is that a person an individual person person should be balanced an individual person should be able to help his or 
our own self then of course in the family the family should be balanced the family members should take care of each other they should be resilient then of course we're going to start extending it out to the community but it, of course sometimes it works so being kind and of course giving a helping hand to strangers to neighbors that is good but if we're real if we really want to impact to make impact if we really want to be happy if we really want to be at peace these are issues that we have to work on we as an individual first have to make sure that we're mentally emotionally and all the early physically psychologically we have to make sure that spiritually we have to make sure that we ourselves we are balanced we know who we are we know our values we know our goals what we stand for and then within the family also we have clear goals and we know what the family stand for then we're going to extend it out to the community because as we start mixing with other people in different communities not just the neighborhood where one living but within the neighborhood there can be many different communities a community is a group of different people it is made up of countless people it can be a small community maybe two three four members or it can be thousands of members so within a community you have different families maybe a part of a community you have like the different religious communities you have the black community maybe there's a woman group who have some shared belief ideas and they come together as a community but before we start extending ourselves to the community and to the society at large i am an advocate for individual individual peace individual strength individual resilience before we can start sharing because as we go out into the larger community we will hear different opinions we will see different things and if you are not stable enough at that time if you do not know who you are you will be easily influenced by the things happening around you and you will also be influenced by of course there are negative things and there are positive things but you as an individual have to know what do you want to be become a part of what do you want to do so let me get into the lesson of community resilience and um today of course i said already the community it's a group of people like the family they share some goals they might have some set values but nowadays um the big thing is the black life matters community and we see another group that says all life matters so anybody can form a community it's based on share goals just like the family maybe they share a particular goal interest and they connect over a particular issue but what this what i'm proposing in for this course for this for the rest of this time we already have communities we already have different groups as i said before there are the religious communities the, the black communities we have women groups as communities so there are already established groups community groups so today i want to talk about six points how to build resilient community how to build resilient community because many of the communities are already there and the the foundations of any resilient community is number one the people the people in the community so the community members they are the most important without people without members then of course you will not have a community and we know when we start dealing with people sometimes we come together with total strangers and of course nowadays we we do not really have time to really sit down and get to know each other on a personal level or 
many people they are very suspicious of other people because of past experiences so it's difficult to trust or it's also people we are living in a generation where people are really suspicious of each other so even if you want to do something good and you start something good and you actually want to get support from someone even from people who you have known them for years and they have been around you spoken to them you would be surprised to know the level of distrust and of course i always said say i always say i am not ignorant to the many negative things going on in the world of course there are many negative things but of course i say i am a positive voice and i know it is difficult it is difficult to just go and trust somebody but what I do and what I do personally I give people the benefit of the doubt yes many people might say that is not that's not Germans would say that is nicht clue it is not smart but uh, we cannot live our life in distrust we cannot live our life in distrust of course we're not going to be unsmart about it but certain things to, to support each other as community member it does not take anything from each other to support for example facebook is a is a facebook is a very good example we we have seen many people on the friends list we have seen many people form groups many people with starting businesses and you will be surprised it will not take a, anything from a person to give a person a like or to say hello on a person's page however people are not doing it i am aware maybe sometimes people get a lot of notice asking them to like each other's page or sometimes they don't have time but these are just simple things and if these simple things are not being done you know that because these are small things in the big things there will also people tend not to support each other but as a community the people are important relationships between the people within the community it is very important that is the first foundation to build a resilient community the people the relationships within the community and the people are the part of the relationships so members of any community of course and this is why i said at the beginning that the individual have to be balanced with all the, the the socially the mental balance and all of that before he or she really can extend himself to a community and the second foundation of building a resilient community is systems thinking and i will read what i looked up on this one complex interrelated crisis okay i did not write anything but the system thinking also within the community of course within a community you have leaders so everybody's going to have like their own opinions their own voices and this is what we're seeing even within the black life matter protest now but then there are certain leaders there, there there should be visionary amongst them to say okay now there there is are we have this opportunity now to let our claims all our issues be heard but we just we we have seen demonstrations in the past and we have we know that sometimes after a month after two months they die down and then there wasn't any results from the demonstration so now the leaders the people in the community who have voices the people 
who are organizing these protests, they have to say, what are our goals for the community? What do we want to see achieved? And I know many people are doing this because they're thinking systematically. For example, in one state in the United States, I saw it on Facebook, one law was already changed that is in favor of black people. And of course, we, for the Black Lives Matters protest, black people, especially in the USA, they have been protesting a long time. If you read history, if you read um, human rights, you will see that the civil rights with Martin Luther King and other demonstrations, they actually got results from what they were doing. Of course, there will be the distractions of the looting, and of course, everybody will have an opinion. Violence cannot solve um, violence, and everybody will have their own personal opinion. However, it's for the leaders in this demonstration, the organizers, to say, what do we want to achieve? How can we reduce the level of systematic racism against the people how can we get more equality within the laws and within the policies so system thinking is number two and of course they're not thinking only you should not think only for your individual self of course yes you your individual self you're going to be balanced but of course you should think also for generations i know Within within the system thinking, um, as I said, these are for leaders, these are for persons that are at the head, that are organizing these things. For example, Martin Luther King, Marcus Garvey, those freedom fighters, they taught about us. We weren't born as yet. Rosa Parks, those people who fought for freedom, also, they taught about us. If, they, if Rosa did not start, if Martin... Luther did not march, me, many black people, we wouldn't have the chance now to protest. So these people, they taught generationally. They didn't think only for their families or only for the community members. So these pe persons, if upon their backs, we are standing now for women, the, the people who were, in, who were involved in like the feminism debate, the equality for women, they have already cleared the path for, for us to have our voices, for us to be in the workplace. And so if you are going to be involved in things like this you're not just there for the fun or for the noise or for the looting you should have in your head as a leader what what is the impact what are the goals how am i going to affect future generation and of course this should be in a positive way and many many people i know many communities they start and they thought oh oh they are going to keep people and nations into bondage for generations because that is what we have seen happening throughout history we we see certain nations they are the ones at the head of world government they're the one ruling and these plans they weren't made 10 years or 20 or even 30 years ago these were made 100 200 300 years ago so I am saying as a black voice also, the black community, we need to start thinking for generations. Yes, thanks to Martin Luther King, thanks to Rosa Parks, thanks to all of those greats. They actually made their impact, but we know that are here. How are we going to ensure that this level of racism, it does not affect our children and our children's children? Okay, back to the six foundations of building resilient community. It is very fitting that I'm talking about this Black Lives Matters protest because I'm, I am a black woman and this is a current issue and this is also, I'm talking about community resilience. But of course, there's not only the black community, there are many different communities. However, I am also affected as a black person, so I am using this as the example, the black life matters or the black community. Number three is adaptability. So we're talking about, I'm giving six 
foundations of building resilient communities. Six foundations of building resilient community. So number one, I said, was the people. Number two, system thinking. Then number three, adaptability. We cannot do things the same all the time. What might have worked for Martin Luther King? What might have worked for Rosa Parks? It might not work now in our time because we already some of the rights that the civil rights that Martin Luther was fighting for, what Rosa Parks, Rosa Parks fought for, we already have achieved those. So we know in this generation that are feeling the pains of systematic racism, we have to think, you no, know, how can we adapt all of those, all of our history, all of the information we have? How can we adapt it to go into the future to ensure that we, as I said before, we are benefiting already. We are, we are reaping some of the benefits from those visionaries of the past. So the visionaries that we have in the black community now, we have to adapt. It's a different time. It's a different, not only time, but with technology, we have different resources at our advantage, advantage, and we also have different needs. So, of course, we're not going to give up on our foundations, the foundations of equality, like things like that. It cannot be adapted. The foundation of the basic human rights, depending on it doesn't matter of your color or your religion. Things like that you cannot adapt, but certain things can be adapted. And number four is transform transformability, and this is the same like adaption. And I will read what I wrote. I had I had a little point on transformability. Some challenges are so big that it's not possible for the community to simply adapt, but it has to be transformed. And of course, the challenges, the challenge of racism, it is so big, it is so organized that adapting will not work. Of course, talking about community resilience, let me get off racism. For example, there is a church community. It, within the church community, you can adapt certain things because, of course, the church as a community, certain things does not change. It's the same God, and of course, it's the same principles of the Bible. Those things cannot be changed, and it will never change. However, certain things, certain rules can be adapted about what to wear. For example, oh, you choose leaders. Things like that can be adapted very easily. But when dealing with a big issue like racism, that calls for transformation of systems, of policies, of ideas. And I live in Berlin, Germany. From uh, For the past nine years now, I'm in Berlin, Germany, and I've been in contact with many different races. And of course, um, with many white, people and i know that many of them 80 percent of them they are not racist they are really not racist and many of them they're just ignorant and of course we as black people also we sometimes we are also ignorant of the, the white culture also so the issue of racism, it's not, it cannot be, adoption will not fix it. Small issues, for example, the, on an individual level, on an individual level, level, things can easily be adapted. One person can change his or her view. One person can get educated on certain issues dealing with, for example, a uh, person of color or a black person within the workplace, more freedom, 
things like that can be adapted but for the for the broader issue of the systematic racism we need that system has to be transformed and transformation doesn't take one day it doesn't take one year and it does sometimes it does not even take one generation it takes over 100 years and things like that so number five is sustainability it needs to work for other communities so we as the black community yes we're calling for equal rights we're calling for justice we're calling for we're calling for the end to racism however also we do not live alone on the planet we as black people we live with other with other people yes the human human beings we are one big community so we cannot be calling for equality for ourselves and not for others also so we have to bear that in mind whatever we call for whatever our goal is it has to actually also work for others because we do not live on the planet alone so in order for these policies to be sustainable of course if they are if they are based on the principles of the basic human rights they should and they will be sustainable but within each policy within each for example i know in america there is a state system there are other intricacies there are other things that needs to be dealt with however it should be sustainable because we are on the planet together and um it is this morning i was telling my son that there is only one race there is not a race of white people there is not a race of black people or chinese it's actually just one human race we are all human beings oh hello carlos i see carlos is there george calls thanks so you go girl speak up thank you cause i hope you are doing fine in this time okay so the last one i had so let me run through them again six foundations of building a resilient community and of course i said there are many different communities you have the church community you might have a group of women coming together because of a cause because of some shared beliefs or ideas then you have all different sorts of community and i was focusing on the black community a bit because as i said i know most of the issues that are going on within this community because it's my community so the last one is courage the last one is courage whatever changes whatever comes out of the protests or whatever is going on if we need to see like changes and it doesn't have not only within communities but even within our individual life we have to have courage because really and truly human beings will human beings doesn't really like to change the, ma the majority of human beings they're used to a system they get comfortable with it and especially if it's benefiting them or if they have been surviving without much struggle or problem they will not want the system to change sorry so it takes courage to change any system it takes courage it takes motivation and it also takes a desire to do that so that is it today from me to you on community resilience i hope that I was not too long and I hope you got something from the six foundations of building a resilient community. As I said, communities, they already exist. We have small communities, groups. Oh, sorry. 
we have small communities of course it can be made up of families different individuals people come together because of a shared goals or because of some connection or they want to achieve something so the communities are already there what's happening is that we need them to be resilient and the foundation six foundations for building any resilient community are the people the people and then we need somebody in the community that thinks systematically and then it should be able to adapt and also transform and also it should be sustainable not only for the community members but for other members of the society and we need courage to do this we need courage to do this so this is it from me to you have a nice week and remember my book resilience by trisha morrison let me see the book resilience this is the book it's on amazon it's in german it's in italian it's also in spanish so you people can get it on amazon it's also on the barnes and noble store and many places, many other bookstores, especially the ebook store. So have a blessed week and bye. And thank you for joining in.